delighted to be here this, this morning. Um, we have a very distinguished gathering, uh, former Chief of Staff General Kapoor, General Ajit Singh, former Governor. Um, we we very, very honored to have uh, Professor Jerry MacArthur um, Hutlin, we, my colleague, Shrimati Praneet Kaur, who just addressed you, and, uh, uh, and Harjeev Singh, founder and CEO of Salwan Media, uh, who I just discovered is, uh, is both a graduate from the United States of America and also uh, Mr. Dalbir Singh's nephew, uh, which is uh, uh, wonderful, and distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My staff did me a great uh, uh, great favor today, they didn't give me a written speech to deliver to you, uh, which uh, makes my ta task more interesting and, and your, your job less boring. Uh, when I uh, look at all of you and uh, distinguished ambassadors who are here, um, including uh, the Kazakh ambassador, I uh, think of uh, a, a very uh, favorite uh, story of mine from the Central Asia of Mullah Nasruddin, who had to address a distinguished gathering like yours once, and was ill-prepared. So he got up and looked at everyone soulfully and said, do you know what I'm going to say? And everybody said, no, we are waiting, we don't know. He said, I don't really like speaking to people who don't know what I'm going to say, and, and went away. So he was summoned back the following week, and uh, again he was ill-prepared, so he looked and, and said, so you know what I'm going to say now? And everyone said, yeah, we do. So he said, good, in that case I didn't say it. And uh, so he left again. And people thought, let's get him back, and half of us will say we know, and the other half will say we don't, we'll force him to say something. So he came back the third time and said, so ladies and gentlemen, you know what I'm going to say? Promptly half said yes, and the other half said, no, we don't. So he paused, smiled, and said, good, in that case those who know will please tell those who don't, my job is done. Um, I feel a little bit like that because you're all uh, very, very experienced in this field of uh, knowledge, uh, uh, knowledge assimilation, knowledge delivery, uh, knowledge bonding, uh, knowledge exchange, and, uh, uh, and you're here really to explore and, 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 and to, to debate and discuss and, and uh, find, uh, find synthesis in your respective approaches. Uh, the good thing, of course, is that everyone assumes, everyone assumes that there is, there are adequate, consensual, common strands in our approach to, to uh, uh, knowledge communities. Uh, we in this country, of course, as you know, have uh, had a very important knowledge commission headed by none other than Sam Kutroda. And they have tried to provide greater connectivity uh, between knowledge hubs across the country, uh, connecting the universities in, in, in a seamless exchange of knowledge and information. I was wondering, uh, uh, while these endeavors and efforts are important, and I think that you are part of, of a similar enterprise and an and outreach, um, how, uh, as a teacher, and I was a teacher many years ago, when I fish, finished from university uh, at Oxford, I was lucky to stay on to teach for three years. And uh, uh, at that time, uh, you know, whatever you knew was, was in the books that you were trained to reach out to. And you, know, you knew where to find what you were looking for, and that's, that was part of the training. Um, otherwise, everything was there on the shelves and books. Uh, and the best students, really, and the, and the best researchers and the best uh, uh, university university people uh, were those who knew who knew where to find particular information and who had access to information that others didn't have. So a very uniquely written article that you found somewhere in a in a journal, which you because you kept looking for things you found somewhere it was not available to others. You'd make photocopies and give it out to your students, and people would think, "My God." This is like uh, God, he's omniscient, he's omnipresent pre present and he finds it. And then in these years, over the decades now, you find that everybody should be knowing everything because it's all available on the net. Uh, of course, there are some, probably some techniques of surfing the net and looking for information on the net, but it's actually now thrown at you. It's there all the time. 
So I thought, how do we articulate the, the, uh, the persona, the persona of, uh, of the knowledge person today, as opposed to a knowledge person less than 30 years ago? And the knowledge person less than 30 years ago, you had to be special, you had to be specially talented, you had to be hardworking to access knowledge which people in, in your uh, uh, community or uh, people of your ilk for some reason uh, wouldn't be able to access. Um, today, I think it's the picture is a, is a mirror image now of then. Uh, today, if somebody doesn't know something, then they must be really lazy. Uh, and they must be uh, really dumb if they don't know something because it's all available to you. And I often wonder now, if you were lecturing nowadays, and I know that uh, Professor Jerry MacArthur uh, would have experienced this, how do you lecture these days? Because every time you say the first three, three words of something you want to speak about, somebody will stand up in the, in the lecture hall and say, Gosh, you got that from the same same website as I got it, and, and uh, we've uh, I've read the whole I've I've read the whole one. So can we jump to the next one? Um, when I first went to Oxford, um, I had a tutor called Jeff Hackney. Uh, I was told that he was the brightest that Oxford had. He was uh, he was a tutor in land law, trusts, and and equity, and I was lucky. Uh, he, he was in a tower in St. Edmund Hall, which was my college. Uh, an old tower, uh, church tower, had been converted into a tutor's room. So you had to climb up about three stories just in the tower to go up to his room, and he was right there on top. And uh, I prepared my first tutorial, and I thought I'd done a great job uh, by saying things that were completely amazing and were supposed to be astounding for my tutor. And I read my tutorial to him. And he was uh, standing against the, uh, the heater and uh, uh, in the typical British way, which, you know, they, they warm themselves from the back. Um, <laughs> it gets their intellectual juices moving. Um, and he looked at me and he said, hmm, interesting. You know, I've known this about 40 years, um, what you've just said. And I thought, gosh, is this, uh, is this uh, how life is going to be for me? So I went out uh, that evening and I talked to the other Indian students and I said, you know, this is, I mean, this is going to be very tough because I thought this was the cutting edge of knowledge. And this guy said, I've known this for 40 years. Uh, so wh what are we going to do? And then somebody said to me, and the lighting of lamp reminds me, you will be addressed by a very good friend of ours, Mani Shankarayar, later in the day. Uh, and they told me a story about Mani Shankarayar and I'm going to tell you this story. Mani was from Dune School, and I'm sure there are some Dune School people here, and uh, very proudly he wore his, his blazer, Dune School blazer, to, to uh, Oxford University, and he went to his first tutorial, and he had the Dune School lamp on his, on his uh, blazer, and this may, be, this, this, this may be a story that's not true, but I mean, it's an interesting story, so I'll tell you. So after a few exchanges, uh, the tutor looked at him and he said, what's that on your blazer? And Mani said, that, that professor is the lamp of knowledge. Uh, that's the emblem of my school. So the professor then said, oh, really? Why didn't they light it for you then? So, <laughs> um, you know, it's the perspective, the perspective of knowledge. The knowledge is, is uh, uh, ever deepening. The knowledge is ever... Uh, uh, rising, uh, ever-growing, uh, and there is never an end to knowledge. Uh, that's the basic thing about knowledge, that it doesn't stop. It's like a student who's never supposed to stop learning. You are learning all the time. Uh, anyone who thinks that they've got it all and they know it all uh, uh, become uh, anti-knowledge persons. And you are here, frankly, at a time, at a time when we are in a cusp of a very strange attitude in this country. We are, uh, on the one hand, uh, doing exactly what you are here to do, uh, which is to provide connectivity between knowledge hubs, between knowledge persons, between knowledge institutions, and enhance it and expand it many times over, many, many times over, because that's the search. That is the, the, the uh, process of discovering greater levels and, and much going much further in terms of knowledge. 
But there are also, there is also uh, an extremely, extremely disconcerting tendency in the country where some people think they know everything. Uh, and there, there is no need to know uh, anything more. And they have, they have the bottom line, they are the last word, they are the, uh, as they say in, in Urdu, harfe, harfe akhir, uh, that there is nothing beyond what they think, what they see, what they say, and, uh, and what they do. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is troublesome. This is very, very troublesome. So you have come here at a very timely moment. You've come here where the, the forces of the lamp, light, and the forces of darkness are struggling for what I believe is a life and death struggle. The last of the, the, the uh, last stand to be made by darkness and ignorance against, against knowledge, against enlightenment, against growth, against, uh, uh, against a new vision of, of the 21st century, in which, thankfully, across the globe, and I've traveled in, and I think together, put, both of us put together, must have traveled at least 150 or 160 countries in the last one year. Because I've traveled, I've traveled about 90, and I'm giving you 70. So <laughs> I would imagine that. <laughs> okay, a little less. But you know, whatever you missed out in numbers is made up by Punjab, because uh, it's Punjab is is is. Uh, isn't it uh, one uh, one of Punjab is equal to ten of us? So, so each country that you visit is equivalent to ten countries being visited. The vigor and, and intensity with which you engage. Uh, oh, Savalak, Savalak. So, see, this is knowledge. See what mathematics can do. Mathematics in Punjab, mathematics in Delhi, completely different. Uh, <laughs> UP, we are in the negative. If you go into UP, you go into the negative. So um, every time, every time you you talk to somebody from UP, you've lost something. Every time you talk to somebody from Punjab, you've gained Savalak. So uh, that's how that's that's knowledge for those of you who are going back, taking some something back from India. So this struggle is a mighty struggle, and fortunately for us, and I, I'm sure the uh, diplomats present here will will. Um, we'll confirm this. As we travel the globe, people have great expectations from us because people have heard about what the Indian IITs have done. People have heard about what Bangalore has done. People have heard about uh, what uh, Indian institutions, the, uh, the ISB, for instance, the Indian institutions of management, uh, management have done. They, they know what uh, the India's, uh, in, uh, India's uh, uh, computer network and uh, the human resource of computers have done in this, in this country, uh, that India is today sending a, sending a vehicle uh, to the Mars, India is on the cutting edge of, of technology. There is enormous amount of expectation, applaud, and, and, uh, and appreciation for India. And you come home and you find, obviously all this is true because it's there around us, but there is also, as I said, the shadow of darkness. And that's what we are, we, are, uh, we are grappling with at home. Uh, and this shadow of darkness has some, some really lethal dimensions. And I will not mention them because mentioning those lethal dimensions just gives, just gives I think, uh, more uh, uh, importance, if not encouragement, to those things. And we have to fight them. We have to fight them here in Delhi, in, in and around Delhi, in any part of, part of our country. And we will. And we will overcome. That's our determination that we will overcome. It is a matter of time that we will succeed. We will succeed. But our real problem today and our real challenge today is not the evil. The evil we will overcome. It's apathy. It is not, it is not uh, anything but unwillingness to open one's mind. And I think for a country, for a country, that, uh, that worships, uh, worships to God, and a country that is, that is committed and adheres to the great grand principles, moral principles of Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, how can that country shut itself to knowledge? Uh, a country in which, uh, in which the father of the nation said, open up the doors and windows of your home, 
let the winds blow across the winds of change from the world be not afraid be not afraid be ever willing to face the winds because they will bring change and they will bring something new by way of knowledge and for to go and i cannot uh, say more than pay tribute to him by reciting his words where the mind is without fear and the head is held high where knowledge is free into that world of of freedom my father let my country awake uh, that's the prayer that when you arrive here uh, i i say and i hope that uh, that god almighty the god of knowledge will answer our prayer thank you very much ladies and gentlemen